Well, one of the things that I am constantly reminded in this job is that things can change in pretty short order. A video we produce one week on a particular topic or car company can quite literally become obsolete weeks, days, or even hours after I hit the magic publish button. And today I'm dealing with one such instance of this. Don't worry, I'll explain. Last month, we published a video on this channel in which I discussed why electric vans have taken off in Europe, but not really in North America. And in that video, I quoted Mercedes-Benz stating that it wouldn't be selling its e-sprinter electric van in North America because, quote, the components for the electric drive system do not meet Daimler's internal standards for crash tests that go beyond legal requirements. That original statement, made to Automotive News less than a month ago, has essentially just been rendered obsolete by the news that Mercedes-Benz and its parent company Daimler has announced the next generation Mercedes-Benz e-Sprinter platform, a platform that will, you've guessed it, be coming to North America. So today I'm going to go over what we know about this new next generation vehicle, what we can expect it to be used for, and most importantly, why I think this electric vehicle could earn Mercedes-Benz a whole lot more money in North America than its electric passenger cars. First though, I need to acknowledge something, that the majority of videos you're going to see today are of the current European spec Mercedes-Benz e-Sprinter. That's because while the announcement for the new e-Sprinter has been made, there is only one video and a handful of still images associated with that announcement. And the video is actually an animation. And rather than make you just look at me for the entire video, I'm going to get a little creative with my B-roll, so I hope you don't mind. Anyway, to the e-Sprinter and what we currently know about it. Not a lot. Like the previous, or should that be current version of the e-Sprinter, the next generation e-Sprinter will look pretty similar to its internal combustion engine counterpart from a distance. This will presumably help keep down production costs, but it will also mean that it's easier to get replacement body panels and keeps them affordable for fleet operators looking to replace broken components on their vehicles in the future. Unlike the current e-Sprinter, which is a front-wheel drivetrain vehicle, the new version uses a rear-wheel drivetrain setup. The motor and the power controller are integrated onto the rear axle. Up front, in the van's nose, you'll find the other high voltage components like its onboard charging circuitry and the battery pack is located between the van's chassis rails under the load bay. This means that the new e-Sprinter has a very similar setup to the recently announced Ford e-Transit, which was another vehicle we did a video on recently on this channel. Unlike the e-Transit, however, the new e-Sprinter, built on a new large van electric platform that Mercedes-Benz has recently accelerated development of, will have a choice of three different battery pack variants, in addition to a choice of two different chassis lengths. While we haven't been given a specific battery pack capacity, I think it is fair to say from the animation Mercedes-Benz published along with this announcement that it's very clear that it views the e-Sprinter not as a long distance van, but rather as something that can be used for local work in large cities. This sentiment could suggest a pretty poor battery pack capacity, but Daimler already makes the EQV luxury minivan in Europe, and it's at least conceivable that some of the EQV's powertrain makes it into the e-Sprinter. That vehicle has a 90 kilowatt hour battery pack and a 150 kilowatt motor, but then again, it is also front wheel drive, so I'm not 100% sure if any components will or can be shared. Additionally, I should probably also note that the EQV is a luxury MPV and is less intended for heavy hauling and more for taking the family on a road trip or maybe transporting people shorter distances as part of a luxury limousine service. And to be honest, since the whole speculation on the EQV shared components has no base in confirmed statements from Daimler or Mercedes-Benz, and I'm now totally second guessing myself, Let's just leave it there. Regardless of actual capacity though, I still think we should expect real world range to be pretty poor. 
And that's more to do with the sad fact of aerodynamics than anything else. Any van is going to have a low coefficient of drag on the road when you compare it to an average car, and that means it's going to use more energy to push itself along the road. The e-sprinter is also larger than the Mercedes-Benz EQV, so it's unlikely it'll even match its efficiency. Also, fully laden, it's going to be a lot heavier, and thus it is also going to use more energy to push itself along anyway. And while we are talking about weight, Mercedes-Benz did say moving to a rear-wheel drive setup allows for the e-sprinter platform to have a higher gross vehicle weight than its current front-wheel drive e-sprinter. That's the one on sale in Europe. And this is a very important thing to consider, especially as Daimler wants the e-sprinter to be used in a number of different applications. Alongside the standard box fan and passenger carrying variants, Mercedes-Benz will offer cab on chassis options with both closed and open cab designs to allow all kinds of other coach-built bodies to be fitted to the e-sprinter. This could include things like a refrigerated box fan, a tipper or a pickup bed, and yes, even an ambulance body. Again, while you not, may not see Sprinter ambulances in North America all that much, they are a common choice alongside Ford Transits in Europe for ambulance fleets. And while such vehicles might have a high mileage in more rural areas, I have friends who work in the industry who fairly regularly have to do insanely long interstate patient transport jobs, those working regular shifts focusing on shuttling emergency patients to hospital are less likely to cover massive distances far beyond the range of what I'm hoping the e-sprinter's largest battery will offer. And that, by the way, I'm hoping will be around 150 miles or 240 kilometres per charge with that largest capacity battery pack. But remember, I'm just spitballing here and any less of that, and I think it will struggle in some markets. We should also bear in mind that this particular vehicle won't likely to be coming to market for another few years. In fact, 2023 is the figure that's constantly being talked about by executives at Mercedes-Benz. Not officially, off the record. So think about two and a half years from now. That fact, I'm sure, will get some of you asking why I'm even bothering to cover this vehicle, given the limited information and non-existent specs we have. After all, right now, this vehicle isn't anything but a promise. But the answer to that is pretty simple. I think the Mercedes-Benz e-Sprinter, if it delivers impressive specs and impressive versatility at the right price, could essentially give Mercedes-Benz a much needed leg up in North America, and in fact, other markets too. When it comes to Mercedes-Benz as a whole, petrol and electric vehicles, it accounts for 13.85% of the luxury car market in the US last year, which is larger than Tesla's current market share in the same segment. But Tesla is obliterating every other company when it comes to the luxury EV market. And even Mercedes-Benz investors have been hypercritical of the EQC, calling it boring and uninspiring. In the commercial vehicle market, however, the Mercedes Sprinter, I'm talking the internal combustion engine variant, has enjoyed a pretty good year when it comes to North American sales. Granted, it's nowhere near the sales figures for the Ford Transit, but by committing to electrification, Mercedes-Benz could gain itself some market share if it can get to market shortly after Ford, but before any of its rivals, namely Fiat Chrysler or GM. And remember, Nissan has decided to drop completely out of the commercial vehicle market in the US. And if Mercedes-Benz can beat the Ford e-Transit on range, well, that will also help. And that's it for today. As always, thanks to the folks on my right for being our $15 to $49 a month Patreon supporters. Special thanks to our $50 a month Patreons, that's John Lyons, Regine Fellows, Jeffrey Songster and Tesla in the Gong, and our deepest gratitude to our $100 a month Patreon supporters, Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, JP Fagerback, Sean Nueda, Will Graylin, and Ian. You can join all of these amazing Patreon supporters and become one yourself by following the links below, or use those links to send us a donation through Ko-fi or Bitcoin. You can also find, if you look below, a link to our free Discord server, which is super simple to join. So sign up, come and chat with the team. And also, please do check out our merch store over at Redbubble. It's a great way of getting some warm clothes for the winter, all while supporting the channel. After the names are finished scrolling, you will see a suggestion for a new video, so do check it out if you haven't, and I will be back very soon. Thanks for joining me, and as always, keep evolving!